Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by. I am Chit Chat, and good news, everyone. It's time for another ABCR challenge. Yes. And today for the ABCR challenge, we are going to be drawing a character that starts with the letter B. Listen, I know it's the letter B, but why not Zoidberg? Get out of here, you silly crustacean, and let the man drool. So, I heard you like drawing. Do you want to have a draw off? Ha ha! So in case you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of Futurama. In fact, you might be able to see Nibbler and the Hypnotoad over there on my shelf. So when it came to the letter B, the obvious character came to mind. The mighty, the majestic, the all-powerful, coolest character of the bunch, according to him, of course, Bender Rodriguez. So with all of that out of the way, let's get drawing. All right, so it's time to jump into some Photoshop for the initial sketch. And then we'll be taking that sketch over into Flash slash Animate to do the the cleaned up line work. And then we'll take it back into Photoshop for the final composition and uh, shading and the background and all that good stuff. So I don't think I've ever actually drawn Bender. Well, no, wait, I take that back. I've drawn him on a whiteboard like once. And his shapes are like really, really simplistic, but they're also very particular at the same time, especially like his eye. And it took me a lot of trial and errors to kind of get that look right. And it might look really um, rudimentary right now, but I'm just trying to like lay in the groundwork so we can go back in and kind of add additional details. This piece really starts coming together once the clean line work goes in, just because um, as far as Futurama is concerned, I always have seen it as being a very clean cartoon. Like everything just looks really good in that cartoon. And as far as being like a fan of the show, I enjoyed Futurama and I'll probably, I'll probably get some hate for this, but I enjoy Futurama a lot more than I enjoyed The Simpsons. Like I grew up somewhat with The Simpsons, but when Futurama came out, you know, being a kid that really enjoyed science fiction and Star Wars and even some Star Trek, I really liked Voyager at the time and Stargate and um, just being in, in kind of into that sort of storytelling in that world, that kind of universe. Futurama, I just instantly gravitated towards when I first saw it. And uh, I've been a fan ever since. I've watched all the seasons like multiple times. I own all of the direct to DVD or Blu-ray movies, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think there was like, there was four of them like, and, uh, and I think they even split those up into episodes at one point. And that, that part was confusing. I didn't know what they were doing there, but this show has seemingly come back from the dead multiple times and for good reason. It's a good gosh darn show. And Bender is is probably, probably my favorite character. I mean, all of them are so good. All of them are. Leela is amazing. Fry is amazing. Bender's great. <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that. Bender's great. Um, I actually, I love his, uh, what was his, like his evil twin Flexo, who had like the, he had the, like the goatee thing going on. That was pretty great. There's some really good episodes to that show. And I don't think I've been more emotional over a television series because there's episodes that like literally just break you down when Fry finds out about, um, about his brother and, um, when Fry finds out about his dog you know and then the very last episode which I won't like spoil in case anyone hasn't seen it but like the very last episode is such a heartfelt ending that kind of made you want like more You're like oh, I don't want it to end here but you know they're going off on other adventures which is what a lot of shows don't really get the opportunity to do there's so many amazing shows that never kind of had that finale that didn't get that proper send-off and it's always unfortunate when it happens um, and sometimes they kind of force an ending and they have to rush it really, really quick to keep it in the world of sci-fi. If anyone's ever seen um, Stargate Universe, that show basically just had to end. And it didn't, it just didn't feel right. The pacing just felt really awkward and rushed to get to this sort of rudimentary ending. So I'm glad that Futurama has had the run that it's had and that it still holds a lot of value to this day and they're still doing stuff with it to this day. I think the I think the voice acting cast is doing like a podcast series of like they're sort of making podcasty style episodes, which is that's a great idea. That's that's hilarious. And like the voice actors for that show, all of them are so good at what they do. Like Billy West, Billy West, I've I've grown up with because of Ren and Stimpy. Like 
his voice is so gosh darn iconic. And in fact, I think he's also the guy who voiced Bugs Bunny in the Space Jam movie. And I think several of the cartoons. I don't, I don't know which one specifically, but I'm almost positive he was Bugs Bunny in Space Jam, which I think like that that movie is a bit of a love and hate relationship for a lot of people. I I like it for its corniness. There's movies that I like just specifically because they're corny. Like, you know, we drew Mario a couple episodes back. I liked the Super Mario Brothers movie. I know it's a terrible movie. I fully acknowledge it's a terrible movie, but I enjoy it because it's a terrible movie. You know, there's certain levels of enjoyment from that kind of thing where you could just sit back and be like, I know this is going to be like the corniest, cheesiest, like just bad experience, but I'm going in knowing that and it's still funny to me because of it. And I don't know, I just thought it was kind of cool to see Yoshi on screen. I'm like, he's a little dinosaur, that's amazing. I don't know why Toad's like some guy with a harmonica, but you know, whatever whatever floats the director's boats, I guess. <laughs> Which apparently that movie was in all sorts of all sorts of trouble from the very I've watched several documentaries about it, but yeah, I mean I love doing the line work inside a flash like this. I mean, I know I've even talked to some friends of mine that just don't get don't get it why that I do this. But again, it's it's all a preference thing. Uh, some people think I'm crazy, and you know what? You're probably right. I probably am a little crazy. I mean, I'm on YouTube. You kind of have to be a little crazy to be on this platform. Oof. So yeah, like I said, this uh, this piece really starts coming together once we start laying in the final line work. Just again, the show is so clean, especially with a robotic character like Bender. Uh, the shapes just they have to be just right, or else it's not gonna look. It's just not gonna look right. And I I personally feel that I uh, when you see the final piece that I've emulated the Futurama style and just elevated it slightly, kind of towards where you know my skill set is and where my kind of stylistic choices are but overall i would say like you could look at this the final piece of this and be like oh yeah it looks like kind of like promo art for futurama almost so this was one of the few times where i'm like you know what i'm gonna try and get this as close to possible as looking like it's supposed to and i had a lot of fun doing it in fact um i kind of want to do more style related challenges um, I mean, my good friend Caitlin, she did a 20 style challenge of like, and many other artists have done like that 20 style challenge of just kind of like drawing themselves in different styles. And like, I've, I've always had a huge problem trying to emulate other styles. It's just like, I've kind of combined ones that I really appreciate to make my own kind of unique look. But it's that, that to me is probably one of the biggest exercises. I know that and just, um, anatomy has always been like really difficult for me personally, especially because like I said, I draw very cartoony characters. And it was really funny, I've met so many different artists, especially when I was at the Art Institute, who I would look at and they're rendering like the most realistic thing I have ever seen pencil to paper. I'm like, how the heck do you do that? And then they'll look at the stuff that I'm doing. I'm just with these little doodles, these little cartoon characters, like I don't know how you do that. So it's it's all a matter of perspective really. And I just, it kind of, it blows my mind because man, I, I wish, that I could just immediately be at the skill level of, of like the artist that can just like render things out and make them look like photorealistic. That, that just blows my mind. And I don't think my mind is just made for that because I'm, I'm an animator at heart and I've used Flash for so long and I've thought in that mindset for so long that I'm always trying to like, even when I'm drawing, I'm breaking shapes down in my head to think of them in the most simplistic form because I'm like, I gotta animate this, even if I don't, even if I'm not animating this and I'm just drawing it to be a picture, for whatever reason my mind's like, if I animate this, how am I gonna make that arm bend or how am I gonna like that leg bend? It's just like it's instilled into my brain and I know that's that's sometimes very detrimental to me, especially when it's not involving animation, but that's just how my, my brain just kind of wired that way and I know it's gonna take some time to kind of train it to, to do otherwise, but as far as uh, the piece is concerned, we're now finally laying in the flats which again is just the base color. And you notice that I started off with the gray tone and the gray tone is just representing the shading. And now I picked this picture specifically of Bender to reference from because I feel like that picture uses a lot more of the blue tones than you actually see in a lot of the episodes or the other promotion art. And I really like that he's kind of has this, he's got, he's obviously gray, but he's got this deep saturated blue tone throughout all of his color choice. And I really, really like that just Bender for being a very simplistic character, not only in design and in color scheme, he's just so gosh darn effective. In fact, um, I know Matt Groin is, is very, very particular about silhouettes and silhouettes are basically like if you were to take a character and then just completely make them all one color, 
And so it gets rid of any detail other than what their shape is. And if you look at a lot of Matt Groening's characters, they all have a very, very strong silhouette. You know, so if you were to take Bender and then just remove all the color and just either, you know, just make him one solid color, doesn't matter what it is, you would still be able to tell that that's Bender. He has a strong silhouette. The same with Lisa Simpson and Bart with their very unique head shapes and like the hair that may not be hair, but part of their head, I don't know. But if you just look at any of those characters, they're all very, very strong. And um, as far as character design, like 101, that that's it. Always have like really strong silhouettes for your characters. The inner details, of course, those are important too. But as long as they have a strong silhouette, you'll know who they are. I mean, case in point, like what is the strongest silhouette that we probably see in kind of today's mythology and today's characters? I would say is Batman because we see more of his silhouette sometimes than we actually see of him and it's because his silhouette is so strong we immediately know that's Batman we are immediately like invested in what we're seeing because like that's Batman I know that's Batman he's got the ears he's got the cape it's Batman and you think about it from that point of view that a lot of the superhero characters a lot of their a lot of their silhouettes could be like if you remove the costume accessories a lot of them would look almost exactly the same. A lot of them have the exact same body build, except for a few, you know, like you look at, you know, Superman who's over, like he's a buff dude. You look at Nightwing who's a bit more slimmed down or any of the other Robins by comparison. So there are some variants in it, but if you were to look at, you know, some of Bruce Timm's stuff, I love Bruce Timm's work, but even when you look at the Justice League, a lot of those characters, if you were to just silhouette them, they would look pretty samey. So again, I, I'm more for like pushing character design a bit more and you know looking at those simplistic shapes because we want to simplify things in our brains we want things to appear more simplistic so we can understand them better so when you're breaking things down into shapes which is what i do a lot for animation it just it helps in that so much and i i i probably trailed off a little bit longer than i meant to on like silhouettes and design and stuff like that but i i find it fascinating and it's something that i want to get better at personally so i like i kind of like sharing where my my thoughts are are at when it comes to you know design and animation plus i've been working on my own animated series uh benny and francis and just looking at their character designs every day and trying to find just subtle ways to tweak the designs to make them more appealing and to make their not only their silhouettes stronger but just their personality stronger because you can tell a lot by a character just visually you know if you look at bender right now not even knowing who the character is you would make assumptions on his character you would look at him and be like okay he's obviously a bit of a i don't give a crap kind of character and he just does what he wants you know you can tell that he's probably a bit of an alcoholic he smokes and he just doesn't care about what you think of him so just looking at him from that you you don't even know that you don't even need to know the show to kind of get a sense of that and the same with you know like fry and leela and zoiberg and professor farnsworth like all the characters I just i love futurama love it so much and simpsons is still going somehow i i mean that is that is amazing to me and not because it's like oh it's a bad show and like it's not a bad show at all it's just like i can't imagine something going for that long and still being able to produce ideas for it over and over and over again but i guess that's just a testament to you know the core characters and that's another thing about not design of characters but just characters themselves is that if a character is strong and they have a lot of appeal to them it doesn't particularly matter what kind of situation you throw them in people will still find them appealing so when I mean, you look at the simpsons i mean in all their adventures you know we're just talking about a normal quote unquote normal family but they get into all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, it's the same thing with Family Guy, American Dad. It's the same thing with Bob's Burgers. You know, you take these characters that have such strong personalities that we really care for, and you can put them in any situation you want. I mean, I mean look at, look at. Um, I think Regular Show is a, a pretty good example. Their, one of their later seasons, they just, it was Regular Show in Space. And it was completely different from all the other previous seasons, but it didn't matter because those characters we already grew attached to. So whatever it is that they did with it, we were relatively on board for. Even um, Adventure Time is a good example too because they do all these kind of like mini series. And Adventure Time is actually a really great example because that is a show that takes even its side characters and gives a lot of them full arcs. One of my favorite, one of my absolute favorite things from Adventure Time is when we get to see Ice King and Marceline in the in the earlier years when she was younger and he was taking care of her and trying not to use the uh, trying not to use the crown because it would make him forget things and like, oh my gosh, I could have a show just about that and they're side characters, they really are. I mean, Fiona and Cake, I love Fiona and Cake. 
Those episodes are some of my absolute favorites. So like that could be a show too. So that, oh, just again, strong characters, strong characters that you feel connection for, that you appreciate, that you love to watch. And you got that, you, you got it made. You know, I'm, I'm really curious where Steven Universe is going right now, you know, and there are a lot of, I would say that there's, uh, there's a fair amount of filler episodes in that series, but I care about the characters enough to be like, I'm okay with it. I want to learn more about some of these side characters, you know, I want to know what they're up to. If it's interesting enough, why not? Why the heck not? So right now we are working with the background and um, it starts off pretty simplistic because I was just kind of trying to get an idea in my head of what I wanted it to look like. And then once I kind of got the gen generic general idea, I was like, okay, so I kind of want a little bit of a cityscape so that we know that he's kind of in the world of Futurama, put a lot more detail on the buildings. And uh, I didn't want to take this back into Flash just because I knew it would take a little bit too long. So I just kind of freehand this stuff, drew it out rather large at first then scaled it down and then mirrored it so that we would have an even long, longer cityscape and then and then shrunk it down again and then mirrored it again so that we would get a lot of detail for not a whole lot of work. So um, the backgrounds have never been like a true focal point for me. I just wanted enough to kind of give you a sense of where he is in, in space, you know, not in space as in literal space, like he being an out in space, probably talking to that celestial star god, no but in space is in terms of where he is in the composition or where he is in the world. So I had a lot of fun with that. I don't normally do backgrounds of this nature. I normally do pretty abstract backgrounds, but um, while doing these ABC challenges, while doing other art pieces in general, I kind of want to like explore just a little bit, not go full, you know, like full ham and just completely, you know, um, go off the rails on what the actual piece is, but just enough to where I can say, you know, I tried something a little bit different this time, and then the next time I can try something a little bit different again, and then just slowly build up my repertoire of, you know, stuff. All right, with all that being said, we are nearing the end of this episode, and now I'm gonna show you the final rendering of Bender. And that is the final piece for the letter B, Bender Rodriguez from Futurama. This one was a lot of fun to draw. I love the character, I love the show, everything about it. But I'm curious, who would you have picked for the letter B? And while you're writing that response in the comments, feel free to leave a suggestion for the upcoming letter C episode of the ABC Art Challenge. Thank you so much as always for watching. I super appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day. And as always, I will chat with you later.